Hi, my name is Ryan Navarro and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. And today I want to talk a little bit about using SolidWorks for preliminary packaging design. Obviously SolidWorks is a mechanical design tool, it's used a lot in product design, however it's not a dedicated packaging design software, but there is a workflow I've used in the past that I think allows a product designer who is interested in packaging, maybe um, getting their feet wet with custom packaging rather than standard uh, boxes that you can order off the shelf, uh, that we can use the SolidWorks to collaborate with graphics artists, graphics designers to generate a die line for a custom uh, folding carton like this here, the simplified version. Um, export that to our graphics designer so that they can produce artwork on it in a, in a graphics illustration software, and then import that artwork back onto our model to produce some convincing 3D renders that will allow us to evaluate if we're happy with the overall package design, uh, maybe what type of construction and printing process should be used when it goes to release. So these are all things that you can do kind of concurrently with your actual product design as you're working along. It really doesn't take much effort. And if it's a retail consumer good like this, you know, consumer expectations for packaging have, have really increased over the years. Everyone wants something to have really nice packaging now. It's kind of part of the overall experience of buying something. So in, in my mind, it shouldn't just be an afterthought. It should be something you're thinking about as you're also designing your product. Okay. And this is a really simple example of just the most basic folding carton you can make. But in the future, I do want to also show some more advanced examples, and we can kind of dive into more detail on, on how you might accomplish this uh, based on your interests. So if you think of anything else you'd like to learn about this example or packaging in general, please shoot a comment down below as you're watching this video. Um, so the general workflow I would use for something like this is I would use the SolidWorks sheet metal tools to create my folding carton. So that's going to allow me to generate a flat pattern that I'll be able to export off as a DXF file to either hand off to the graphics designer or import into a graphics illustration software myself to lay out the artwork. Um, also, building with the sheet metal tools kind of ensures a manufacturability check. It's ensuring me that as I'm modeling this, you know, it won't have the artwork on it yet here, so I have another configuration without the artwork. As I'm modeling it, if I click flatten and I can develop the flat pattern, that guarantees that, yes, um, this thing is going to be manufacturable, right? Uh, folding cartons, the actual production designs might have more details in this. They might have complex diagonal folds and glue tabs and things that I don't really concern myself with representing at this stage. My primary concern here is, is the overall size of the carton and also um, making sure that it's going to be manufacturable and basically defining these zones for the artwork to be created. That's the primary thing that I need to do is how much how much frontal area we're going to ha have here. Do we want to have a window so we can see into our product? Um, those different types of decisions that I want to be making now. So I'm just creating a really preliminary design and I'm going to have what's called a, a die line here is the packaging term for a flat pattern. Um, it, this die line is going to be preliminary. We know it's going to change in the future, but it is allowing some concurrent development because um, if I do a good job prototyping this die line here, the graphics art can all be developed here and then when the final production carton is approved, there should need to be only minimal changes to that graphic art. So when I'm ready to export this, if I'm happy with the shape of this package, I would just do a file, save as, and save this out as a DXF file. So DXF file is a vector graphics format that programs like Adobe Illustrator would be able to import. And when I save this out, I'll get a little wizard that allows me to choose either particular faces that I would want to export. So if you ever want to just solid model the box, you could choose the individual faces here to export. Um, kind of you'd have to do them separately and then you stitch them together in the in the graphics art program so it wouldn't be quite as smooth of a workflow but that is a possibility if you have a shape that maybe is not able to flatten or if you want to define something as a label you could use a split line here create a split face and export out that face as a, its own entity so the graphics could be developed on that region we're going to choose the sheet metal option and I'll choose to also include the bend lines because this will make it so that 
the artist can clearly see uh, where these different zones are going to be defined between the bend lines. So I would export this out, pass it off to someone with the graphics illustration software, and then they would end up with some type of output that would look something like this. So this is a vector graphics file, SVG file, that has my die line brought in, and it also has my artwork mapped out on it. So we can start to get an idea for what the box is going to look like, but there's still some ambiguity, right? When you actually form it up into 3D, what does it look like? What is it going to look like in different settings, in a retail environment, in a home or office environment? These are questions that are best answered through photo rendering rather than looking at some 2D graphics. So the next thing I would do is have these individual panels of artwork exported out as raster files, PNG files or JPEGs from the art software and those can be brought into a rendering tool. So SolidWorks has PhotoView 360 integrated into it or we also have the new SolidWorks Visualize that can run as a standalone so potentially even if you have a graphics department they could be using SolidWorks Visualize to pull in the SolidWorks model and apply their graphics on it and do the photo rendering on their own. Um, in this scenario I'm going to pull these images back into SolidWorks as decals and apply them to my carton here. So I would apply them as decals, as PNG images will have transparency built into them or can also use a separate mask file so you'll see here I have these different decals applied to the box. That's how I'm getting my graphics on there, and I prefer to use the label type projection whenever I have a choice to apply uh, the decals to the carton. And that's going to allow me to set up my scenes and cameras. I have different cameras here to capture maybe different perspectives of the box. Uh, adjust my scenes in the background. And, you know, you can drag and drop different scenes and appearances here from SOLIDWORKS or you can set up your own custom scenes and that's what allows me to in conjunction with PhotoView 360 or SOLIDWORKS Visualize get some nice quality renders out of here to make decisions about the packaging. Uh, another benefit of this process is that if you want to represent the forming process of the box I can do that thanks to the sheet metal tools. So in this case what I tried to do is create as many edge flanges as possible because they will allow me to partially unfold the box. You could use these fold and unfold commands which would allow you to unfold one bend at a time and that might be adequate but it's a pretty binary unfold. It would just completely unfold one bend. I wanted to be able to partially unfold, maybe 45 degrees. So you can't do that with just the unfold command, so I created everything as edge flanges here, and that allows me to use configurations to vary the positions of those edge flanges. So I can vary the angle those edge flanges are positioned at to show kind of the process of breaking this box down or putting it together. So I have a partially open, a fully open configuration, a partially flattened configuration. And to simplify this a little bit, when I created these edge flanges, I created them in a way where there's only really one that has its angle being adjusted, and then the other edge flanges are set parallel or perpendicular uh, to that to that original edge flange. So that um, makes it a little bit simpler to set up, or parallel to the edge flange, or parallel to the base flange, I should say. So there's only really one angle I'm adjusting through these configurations here. And you'll find that because, again, these are sheet metal tools, not, not paper box forming tools, if I try to go really flat with the box, it may start producing interference issues that would show up as a rebuild error in SOLIDWORKS. So one thing you might want to do with this, if you're okay with a little bit of issues because you know how pliable the paperboard might be, is we can turn off the option verification on rebuild, which would typically trigger rebuild errors more frequently uh, for self intersections and things like that. Um, and another thing I did here was I kind of had to adjust things a little bit, maybe start applying some extra offset to this edge flange to get it to go this flat. Um, because really, I would only ever be using these images for demonstrative purposes to show how something is formed. 
maybe on a drawing. Okay, And then to get this thing completely flat, I cheated a little bit and I used a flex feature to flatten this out. So the flex feature, or you could use a non-uniform scale feature to flatten this. And at that point, it wouldn't be 100% dimensionally accurate. But again, it gets the point across to show how this carton would be erected. So these are just some of the things you can do, kind of thinking outside the box a little bit with SolidWorks, um, to incorporate things that would typically be done quite a bit downstream, developing packaging, developing labeling requirements for a product design. Um, bringing those a little bit more upfront allows you to kind of reduce the overall time to market. It allows you to get a better input from the actual product designers on how the product's going to be represented, you know, when it's sitting on a shelf or when it's being shipped to a customer or a business. So there's a lot of benefits there. And if the product designer is already used to using SolidWorks for product design, it's not really such a leap to mock up some preliminary packaging in here. Again, knowing that it's not going to have all the, all the features potentially necessary for the actual carton to be mass produced but it gives us a good enough idea to be able to develop some preliminary artwork and do some preliminary rendering and help make design decisions. So I definitely want to share more information about this process and different methods of packaging and manufacturing in the future. So please share in the comments section below if you have any suggestions or areas that you're interested in uh, seeing more about this process and I'll be sure to follow up with additional content in the future. Thanks for watching.